George Foreman has changed his tune. He's done a 180. Because I swear a week or so ago, he was saying that Mike Tyson shouldn't come back. He should stay retired and he was discouraging him from stepping back in the ring. But apparently he's now seen that infamous clip of a 53-year-old Mike Tyson hitting the pads. And that's apparently enough to convince Big George that Mike Tyson can actually come back and be a top contender again. So I'm going to quote George Foreman directly here. He said, quote, I was so happy. He looked like he had turned the clock back at least 20 years. He was looking fit and those punches were coming sharp. If he's able to go into the woods and dedicate himself to that for about 10 months, he could come back and really be a top contender. Doing exhibitions, that's what they do. That's the way it happens. I called Dick Sadler my original trainer back in the 1960s. I just want a gold medal. I said, I just want to do exhibitions. That's all and learn more about boxing. Next thing you know, I'm in with the heavyweight champion of the world. So it starts off talking about exhibitions, but then it gets bigger and bigger. And Tyson, I would like to see him back in the ring. He's an older fella, but a record is always waiting to be broke. End quote. Hmm. (laughs) Getting encouragement from big George Foreman now, Mike Tyson, to come back and give it another go. Since that initial clip of... Tyson hitting the pads came out. There have been a few other clips. And to me, the other clips were revealing. It depends how sharp your eye is, but I looked at those other clips and I said, Mike Tyson is moving like an old man. In the first clip where we saw him looking explosive and fast and powerful, he was impressive. But in the other clips, I was looking at Tyson's body movement and I could see quite a big difference between the way he used to move and the way he was moving in them clips or, or, or you know, in, in those other clips. I could see a difference in the way his body was. He wasn't as fluid in terms of the way he was moving his upper body. His punches weren't quite as fast. See, that first clip that came out that obviously picked the best moment out of the entire pad session that they could find and thought, yes, that's it. We're going to put that one up. I think if they put the entire pad session, if it, the entire thing has been filmed. If they put the whole thing up, I think it will put it into much better context. You know, where Mike Tyson's currently at physically. I don't think he, uh, he is as uh, rejuvenated as we first may have suspected he was or, or, the, or the way that first clip made it look like he was. Uh, I think that Mike Tyson, if you see him fully in training, you're going to tell that this is really is a 53-year-old Mike Tyson. This is not like Tyson in his 30s or in his 20s at all. This is a guy who's slowed down a hell of a lot. This is a guy who doesn't have the same uh, movement in his body, etc. So, yeah, that's what I took from seeing those extra clips. And I agree with the likes of uh, Dana White. Uh, I agree with the likes of, uh, because Dana White has come out and said that, you know, Mike Tyson shouldn't come back and he should stay retired. I agree with that. I agree with the likes of Frank Warren and it's unusual for me to agree with Frank Warren, but I agree with him. I think Mike Tyson should stay retired. He shouldn't even dream of getting back in the ring with any serious heavyweights because he'll get himself hurt, you know, and he'll he'll get himself beat. And he's been beat before. He's been hurt before. We don't need to see that again. It was a sad sight watching him lose to the likes of Kevin McBride at the end of his career. Now, some people have said that uh, Mike Tyson was really fighting for uh, financial reasons when he lost to the likes of Danny Williams and Kevin McBride, and, and that because today he's in a better position financially and he'll be fighting for the love of it rather than fighting for finances, that he might be better today than he was then. I don't buy it, people. I don't care what the reason is Mike Tyson, you know, what what reason Mike Tyson is thinking about fighting again uh, is. What reason? Physically, he's not going to be the same at 53 as even he was when he was 40 or 38, like when he fought McBride and Williams. He's not going to be the same. He hasn't been living the life of an athlete, of a boxer for the past 15 years. He's been fluctuated in weight, He's been doing all kinds of substances. He's been drinking. He's people like he's not going to be able to come back and be better than he was 
15 years ago. It's impossible. Now, if Mike Tyson somehow, as George Foreman is kind of egging him on to do, came back and broke his record and became the oldest heavyweight champion in history, I mean, that really would be extraordinary. And when George Foreman did it, he did it against Michael Mora. And George Foreman had been back for a long time. This is the difference here. George Foreman had been fighting regularly for several years prior to finally uh, winning the heavyweight title again against Michael Mora. Okay, that was, that, that was his second reign as champion. He'd been fighting regularly. And Michael Mora was a guy who'd moved up from light heavyweight. Okay, and Michael Mora never had good punch resistance as a heavyweight. So this was a very, very vulnerable guy. And even then, Michael Mora was beating the daylights out of George Foreman for the majority of that fight. In fact, I think he won pretty much every round, if memory serves me correct. It, it wasn't a particularly competitive fight. It was just Michael Mora using George Foreman as a heavy bag for like 10 rounds, and then George Foreman caught him in a 10th and knocked him out. Has Mike Tyson got it in him to endure that type of punishment at 53? Remember, George Foreman was 45. Mike Tyson is 53. And Mike Tyson was a guy, because he matured very quickly physically, uh, he was a guy whose prime was in his early 20s. So he's over double that age now. He is so far away from his prime, it's not even funny. And I know people say that even Mike Tyson out of his prime was better than most fighters in their primes. Yes, but again, look at who he lost to, people. He lost to Buster Douglas. Is Mike Tyson today better than the man who lost to Buster Douglas? Absolutely not. Is Mike Tyson today better than the man who lost to Evander Holyfield? Absolutely not. Is Mike Tyson today better than the man who lost to Danny Williams or Kevin McBride? Absolutely not. I'll go further. Is Mike Tyson today better than the guy who was getting outboxed by Francois Bolter? Absolutely not. And the Bolter fight in particular is one that people need to pay close attention to because he was coming back off a ban of something like a year or more when he fought Francois Bolter. And you could tell that his timing was totally off in that fight. Yeah? Imagine what Mike Tyson's going to be like at 53 when he hasn't been in the ring for 15 years. Where's his timing going to be now? People, be realistic. <laughs> I think Tyson, if he's going to come back and box exhibitions, you know, it is what it is, but he's not going to be a top contender. He's not going to get back in there and, you know, start running through the division again. That's absurd. And anybody with a sharp eye who looks at those other little clips of him training, you'll see the telltale signs there that this is an old man who's hitting those pads. Yeah, he might look like he's still you know, 35 for three or four seconds when you've cherry picked a particular clip. But if you watch the other clips or if they actually released the whole training footage in its entirety, you would see that this is an old man. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I certainly agree with Dana White on this. I agree with Frank Warren on this. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you think he can come back and do something extraordinary and make history. And of course, if you're going to make history, you can't listen to the likes of me, the naysayers. I understand this. I'm just giving my opinion here, people. Um, if you really want to make history and do something extraordinary, you can't listen to people who tell you that you can't do it. But therein lies the danger. Yeah. Uh, Mike Tyson has always been a risk taker. And as the old saying goes, fortune favors the bold. <laughs> but it's kind of a double-edged sword having that mentality or that personality type because <clears throat> yes, you get a lot of your success from being very confident and believing in yourself to the point where people think you're deluded. But at the same time, you can become your own worst enemy because once your ability betrays you, once you no longer have 
what it takes physically, but yet in your mind, you still believe you have it. You can get yourself hurt. You can get yourself humiliated. Yeah. That's when the critics are more likely to be right than they were earlier on in your career. Cause you know, these guys, Mike Tyson and, you know, most professional boxers, they grow up and they have a lot of naysayers telling them, you ain't going to be a pro boxer. There are millions of other pro, you know, fighters, uh, people out there who want to be heavyweight champion. What makes you think you're going to be it? You know, they grow up with this and they have to fight through it. They have to learn how to believe in themselves when people around them don't. Yeah. But what happens at some stage in their lives is that that belief becomes self-destructive basically because they start putting themselves into fights which they can't win when they're well past their sell-by date, you know. So anyway, that is something I'm very well aware of that uh, you can't make history if you listen to naysayers and doubters and all that kind of stuff. And maybe Mike Tyson will shock the world. Maybe he'll shock me. I don't think so. You know, I'd be that would be the most shocking thing I've ever seen in boxing if Mike Tyson came back and won the world heavyweight title. And in fact, the point I was trying to make or going to make a few minutes back is that could Mike Tyson target, let's say, <clears throat> uh, Manuel Char or somebody who has a regular title? Would that qualify as him coming back and winning the world title again? Maybe. But if you're talking about Mike Tyson against AJ or Mike Tyson against... Uh, you know, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, please stop it. But Mike Tyson against some, you know, weaker heavyweight out there for a regular belt, um, he'd probably still lose, but he'd de definitely have a better chance. And as I say, when George Foreman fought Michael Mora, Mora was the most vulnerable or, you know, one of the most vulnerable top heavyweights out there. It wasn't Lennox Lewis that he beat to become the oldest heavyweight champion of all time. It wasn't Riddick Bow. It wasn't Evander Holyfield. It wasn't Mike Tyson. It was Michael Moore, you know. So could Mike Tyson do something similar right now? Who knows? I seriously doubt it, but it's a strange old world. <laughs> and I guess it's not completely beyond the realms of possibility, but I certainly wouldn't bet on it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's Hammer I'm Out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.